Today's episodes of SRD, Scott and I are going to be sitting down. We're going to be talking characters and character voices. Okay. This is good. It's real good. SRD is proud to announce our brand new sponsor, Scabbard RPG Campaign Manager. And it's exactly that. You can go there and keep track of all of your NPCs, your items, your maps, all of these things that you and your players can both access. If that's something that you need to do to kind of keep things in order, I know I do, I've been using it for years, you can find it down in the link below. If you decide that you like the premium features that are there, if you use our link within the first three hours, you get a 20% discount. Hi, and welcome back to SRD. I'm Scott. I'm Brian. And today we're going to talk about role playing and character voice acting. How you can do it, what, what techniques that we can talk about, we can help you with, and just in general, you know, what the, how it works. So Brian, Brian is probably one of the, the better voice actors that I've met uh, personally in real life. So I kind of wanted to bring him on the show to join us. So Brian, tell me a little bit about, you know, what, what you do uh, when, I, when you have a character and what, what get, how do you get into that and where you put your voices from? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, first, it helps to be a little bit crazy. That, that's key. So having a little bit of insanity really helps. Um, second of all, I've always tried to stay away from staple characters. Okay. Right, or kind of what I call um, cookie cutter, you know, cardboard cutouts. Sure. Wow, say that five times fast. <laughs> we'll wait. They almost got it. Almost. Um, but what I mean by that really is kind of like your your mainstream classic um, characters that you see. So like Lord of the Rings, for example, right? You know, what's what's the mainstream view of an elf in Lord of the Rings? They're uptight. They're above everybody. Right. Right. They're very standoffish. They basically they need to get laid more than anything. <laughs> um, so I've always tried to stay away from those staple characters and concepts. Um, so I always really kind of started reaching out sure. and uh, kind of getting different ideas and concepts. Um, I'll Try take, to go against the mold when it comes to character creation. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's all about breaking the mold um, because um, when it comes down to it, that's where you get that uniqueness, that kind of flavor. Sure. You can take different mold ideas and put it together and make something unique. Um, for example, in Shadowrun, I uh, had a Minotaur. First time as a player, I got to play kind of more of your monstrous races besides some of your other fantasy kind of core concept races, right? So like your humans and your elves and your dwarves and your halflings. Um, but I wanted to do something different than a Minotaur, right? So when you think of a Minotaur, you think of a big, hulking, you know, bull-like beast with horns. And I thought, okay, in this world, what can I do to make that different? All right. Make him a cowboy. <laughs> Country loving, cowboy boots, six shooter, minotaur, right? So I always try to think outside of that box. Um, some of the other things um, that do help with that is, is honestly randomness. Um, whenever I have a character developed, um, so like on my way here last Saturday uh, for a session, um, you know what I was doing on the way here in the car? I was listening to AM talk radio, <laughs> not because I wanted to hear whatever statements or topics were being talked about, but because I wanted to give my character a chance at a random conversation. Oh, okay. So one thing that is key as far as really good role playing, because things happen in the moments, it's always fluid and dynamic, right? You can have a structure as a GM, but conversations with your players are always dynamic. Sure. So you have to practice that dynamicness. Right, that chaosness, yeah, and a lot of times things like that. Uh, there's a comedy show on FM channels, like in Indianapolis area. Um, I'll listen to that, and I'll practice the character voice with that. Okay, as well. I, um, I know that uh, one of the things that I like to do, if I have a specific voice in mind, mm -hmm. I will. You can get on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Um, and you can usually find uh, tutorials on, on voice acting for that specific accent that you're looking for. Sure. Um, sure. I know that I did a, a live game. About a month ago, that was in Ravenloft. That you know, I really wanted that that thick Slavic accent. So mm -hmm. got on there, and it was about five seven minute video that talked about you know where to draw out certain vowels and where to hit certain consonants and those kinds of things. I probably lost it at this point, but you can find it. I'm sure. Um, I think it's in our live play videos. But uh, you know, I, I worked really hard on that, and I did something very similar. So 
you know, I, I turned on the radio and I tried to, whatever they would say, I would repeat in, in that, that horrible accent, <laughs> you know, that I'd worked on, right. um, just to make the character a little bit more different, a little bit more unique um, at the table, the virtual table. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing I'll do when I'm coming up with a character idea, um, my wife will be in the other room and she'll start hearing a conversation somewhere. And it, it's me conversating with myself in that <laughs> character um, just to get through the mannerisms and the flow. Um, and then with the body languages too, um, you can really get through as a player or as a GM to your players just by the change of body language. Yes. Uh, because especially as a GM, you know, you have so many different characters, so many different things you're having to think about. Um, that's one thing is changing the body language helps right. with that. Um, body language and props. Yeah, nonverbals are what, 80% of our communication. Right, um, exactly. You can have characters, especially if you go to a, a culturally specific town, for example, that you're trying to get across to your, your people. And yeah, maybe mm -hmm. the, the blacksmith sounds kind of similar to you know, the priest, but if you, even if you're using the same accent, because they're, they're culturally centered, you can at least do different body language. So you know, right. maybe the blacksmith is, you know, got the ILS going on. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an imaginary lat syndrome for those of you um, that are out there. <laughs> but uh, you know, but maybe the priest has a, you know, much more of a an inside body talk when he talks. Exactly. He, you know, he does very smaller movements. Mm -hmm. um, those portray huge things to your players without changing the voice so much. Yeah, and there's the the one thing I have troubles with is differentiating different ogres and goblins. <laughs> um, I tend to have one voice, like ogres tend to kind of be this low voice, right? right? Um, goblins are just kind of the same thing, but a little bit higher. Uh, but things that add to that nuance, because especially as a GM, your players have an imagination buy-in already, but adding those little nuances make a difference. So for example, one thing I do, if my characters, for example, are talking to a goblin, kind of hunker down a little bit, right? Right. Smaller creature hunk down. If they're fighting a frost giant, stand up from the table because what does that make your players do? It makes them look up. They look up, right, just as they were in real life, right? as if frost giants were in real life, which they are. Um, so little things like that add into it. Um, one example I'll give you, uh, an NPC that I made, kind of in that growth and development into that voice. Um, I grew up in the theater. Uh, my mom was heavy into theater when I was a kid, so I took theater classes and everything and went through all that. Um, so I, I learned to kind of practice voices and practice things. So a lot of times my wife will hear me practicing voices sure. and she'd be like, are you, are you talking to somebody? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm fine. She's like, just talking to myself. Okay. And, you know, she's gotten used to it now, but so I would be practicing random voices and one voice I was trying to do was Antonio Banderas. Do you have these cockies with pleats? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of people out there who need some pleats in their khakis after hearing you say that. I, it, it is horrible. <laughs> Antonio Banderas, I do absolutely horribly. <laughs> but what you do is when you're practicing in the mirror like I do, alone at night, sobbing and weeping, um, is even if it's horrible, you can still take that voice that you come up with and implement it into a character. Yeah. So in my campaign with my players that I have, um, I gave them the option of getting a house and buying it. And I thought, okay, well, now they have a house. Now they need to decorate it. So I came up with a list of options. Okay, well, now I need to have a decorator NPC. So I took that same voice, put it into a cobalt, and <laughs> started kind of walking around the living room, taking Antonio Banderas and trying to manifest him into what I would imagine is a cobalt. <laughs> so I started hunkering down. I started bringing my sleeves forward. And then I started changing the voice right. and kind of playing and man manipulating around with it. So Antonio Banderas slowly turned into Sergei, the cobalt home designers. So now, whenever my players need to speak with Sergei, they see this. I am here for all your home decoration needs. You need <laughs> carpets, we get carpets. You need drapes, we have the finest drapes in the world. And so that's that slowly evolving and playing around with it. Right. Um, 
And then it's taking that character on that car drive with that AM radio mm -hmm. and having that random conversation. Yeah. There's that random commercial that pops up, right? Big sale tires. Serge is looking for big sale tires. And what that does is that gets you used to the randomness of right. that character. Because otherwise, you're only used to that one line you use as your character. So yeah. when you sit down at the table, whether you're a player or you're a GM, and somebody asks you something you didn't expect as that character, you lose that character because then you have to stop and think about it. Right. Versus practicing and having those random conversations allows you to then be better prepared with that character. You get those nuances down in that voice. Sure. So what I would say to that uh, as far as, as tips for when you have different accents for different NPCs um, is to have your cheat sheet next to you as far as their names and, mm -hmm. and where they're at. But also for their, put write down some of their mannerisms. Um, yeah. Short, yeah. Antonio Banderas, you know, sleeves down. Just those little two, three, four things that you can look at quickly and be like, oh, okay, that's who that is. Um, and then you can slip right. right back into it. Or, you know, deep, tall, you know, mm -hmm. English. You know, whatever you <laughs> need to do to, you know, pull on that accent when you need to. And that way you don't accidentally slip into the other ones, which I've done a million times. Um, I'll, I'll try to mm -hmm. speak this one. Um, then it ends up coming over here. Um, but I think the, the important thing to note is that you don't necessarily have to have the, the perfect accents um, all the time or at all, honestly. Uh, I think that as long as you're showing that effort, your players will appreciate it or will appreciate it for oh, you. Oh, absolutely. It pulls in that little bit of depth. And at least if you give it a shot and at least practice at it a little bit, um, we're not Matt Mercer um, or any of the other voice actors that are out right. there. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, I think that there's an expectation for some people nowadays for us to be. Um, but it, like anything, it takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of work. As long as you put forth, I think, some effort, uh, the mannerisms go honestly probably farther than, in my opinion, than voices do. Um, but together, they they just really pull it, it all together. Yeah, and it's really nice. And, and even if... You're, you're just starting to play around with voices and what you can do, or even if if you're just, you, you know, you're struggling with that, there's still little things like what you were saying. So like if you wear glasses, for example, and you have, say, a wizard character, and he's going through his book, I have the glasses down, and I'm scrolling through my book, I'm going through, and you still have the body language of going around. Or if you're playing an older gentleman, and say you're in a shop, well, I can't quite see that. Would you mind? Uh, I got to get my bifocals changed out. Little things like that, even though you're not changing your voice around, add so much more in. Because like I said, your players' imaginations already have the buy-in. Sure. It just it gives them that, I guess, that visual tangibility right. with what you're um, portraying to them. Well, yeah. Um, inflections and syncopation can do a lot too. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you talk like Shatner, you, you, you can have, Shatner doesn't have an accent. He has syncopation. And so right. if you add right. that to your different, your different voices, your different NPCs, you can accomplish similar things. If you want to talk really fast and that's how your character talks and that's what mm -hmm. they do, then so be it. That's fine. But that you have a difference between the person that talks really, 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 really fast and the person that takes their time and focuses on what they want to say and they present it as such. And just those little things can do, accomplish very the same thing. Very distinctly. Yep, absolutely. Versus very rapid. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you guys like this video and you would like to see you know, some more, always please hit that like and that subscribe button. Hit the dislike button if you don't like it. And of course, please share us with your friends. We'd love to see you again next week. Have a good one.